Let's go over to the prophet Ezekiel tonight. Amen. In the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, we will be in chapter 3, beginning in verse 22 tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to see Ezekiel is a very unique prophet of God in the sense that he is going to be acting out his prophecies. So he's not just going to be speaking with his mouth. In fact, for about six and a half to seven years, he will not be able to speak very much. And so for about that period of time, he's going to act out his ministry before the people. Amen. So we're going to learn some interesting things about uh, these couple of things tonight. Before we read the text, the title of the message is going to be the binding of Ezekiel and the death of his wife. Amen. All right, beginning chapter 3, verse 22, Ezekiel three twenty-two. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth in the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river Kabar, and I fell on my face. When you really come into the presence of God, it will affect your body, what you do with your body. Amen. When you feel God's presence, you want to lift him up. You want to lift your hands. Sometimes you want to fall on your face. Amen. Because he is a living God. Amen. So Ezekiel saw the glory of God. He fell upon his face. Yeah. Praise the Lord, church. Then the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. And spake with me and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thine house. First thing, go shut yourself in your house. Second thing, but thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them and thou shalt not go out among them. Number three, and I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth that thou shalt be dumb and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Let's go to chapter 24, Ezekiel chapter 24. Six and a half years later, he is able to speak. Chapter 24 of Ezekiel, verse 1. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day. Even this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem, this same day. So at this point, it's been six and a half years he has prophesied uh, to the people by acting out uh, his ministry uh, before them. Amen. Praise the Lord. So from 593 to 586, he was dumb, but now he is able to speak. At the end of the chapter, verse 26, it says that he that escaped them that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear and with thine ears. In that day shall thy mouth be open to him which is escaped. And thou shalt speak and be not more dumb, and thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And so we look in verse 15 also of the same chapter. Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke, yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead, bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us that thou doest? Then I answered them. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary 
for the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, that which your soul pitieth, and your sons and your daughters whom ye have left shall fall by the sword. And ye shall do as I have done. Ye shall not cover your lips nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your heads, your shoes upon your feet. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for iniquities and mourn one toward another. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you today. We ask your blessing to be upon the reading of your holy word. Give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Again, title of the message, The Binding of Ezekiel and the Death of His Wife. In the second chapter of the prophet Ezekiel, if you have read the prophets, you know that it is a very, very unusual prophecy. And he is a very, very unusual and unique prophet of the Lord. He is a prophet. He is a priest. He is also a watchman on the wall, which we saw last Wednesday night. Amen. As a prophet of God, the Bible tells us that God gave him a scroll. And that scroll, it was the scripture. It was written on the back side and on the front side. And that scroll was completely full so that he could not add to or take away anything from that scroll. It was all prescribed. Say prescribed. It was exactly what God was telling him to preach. So he couldn't add to it. He couldn't take away from it. It was completely full. And God told him to take that scroll and put it in his mouth and begin to eat it. And God said three times to him, really two times, eat and eat and then gorge yourself with that scroll. So three times God told him to eat that scroll. And as he eats the scroll, the word of God goes inside of him. And so as he looks at this scroll before he eats it and the scroll goes inside of him, the word of God, this scroll front and back is filled with terror. It is filled with torment. It is filled with judgments that are soon to fall upon the nation of Israel about six and a half years later. And so as he eats that scroll because of the torments and the terror and the fear that has gripped this prophet of God, he is no longer going to be able to speak. God is going to bind his tongue because the terror that he is seeing is so ominous that he is not going to speak for six and a half years. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now think about that. And so God told him, he said, you go in your house. And at this point, the scroll of God, the word of God is on the inside of him. He is filled with terror as he sees the future about six and a half years later where Jerusalem is going to fall. This is all a picture of what the book of Revelation teaches us about, known as the great tribulation. If you study the book of Revelation, you know those things that are going to come upon this world. And there are frightful things that are going to take place before the coming of Jesus Christ back to this earth. But I assure you tonight that God is going to return, that Jesus is going to return. But before he does, there will be judgments that will fall upon this planet like the world has never seen before. Such terror and such torments uh, are going to grip the hearts of men. Political systems will fall. Religious systems will fall. Economic systems will fall. And all that which is coming in the future before the coming of the Lord is prefigured in the prophet Ezekiel. And so as he eats that scroll, he is literally terrorized on the inside as to what is coming in his day and in the future time. And so because he is mute, uh, he will not speak six and a half years to seven years, only periodically. As the people shut their ears to the preaching of the word of God, he will not speak. But there will be limited times when the people will be willing to hear what the prophet is saying. And at that time, then God will open his mouth and he will only speak intermittently. Amen. It is because the people do not want to hear the word of God. They don't want to hear the judgments of God because they are a rebellious house. That God says, okay, I'll just shut his mouth so you can't hear what you don't want to hear. You're not going to listen anyway as to what is told you. 
Amen. And because you're not going to listen, God says, I'm going to shut his mouth. But he will act out his prophecies before you for six and a half to seven years before the judgments will fall upon the planet. Amen. And of course, as they watch this prophet of God, very strange man of God, doing very strange things as he acts out his prophecy for six and a half years, they are puzzled by what he is doing. But he is literally a sign himself. He is experiencing in his own self the very things that he is prophesying and he is living through those things and he is really doing some weird stuff. And they just don't understand what this man is all about. Well, first of all, think about it. This man is told by God, as I read it to you in verse 24, to go into his house and to shut himself in that house so that he will become a prisoner in his own home. First thing he does, then he walks into his house. He's full of the scroll of God Almighty. The judgments are going to come. He walks in his house and he makes himself a prisoner in that house. That means for six and a half to seven years, he will not have a public ministry. For six and a half, seven years, he will be shut up in his house. What a very strange preacher. Amen. Amen. What if I stood before you tonight and I said, God told me to go shut myself into my house for six and a half to seven years and I will no longer have a public ministry. You would probably think I've lost my mind. Well, that's exactly what God told Ezekiel to do, to go shut himself up in that house for six and a half to seven years. He walks in there as a prisoner. He doesn't have a public pulpit or a public ministry. But people still get word of that prophet. They still hear about this prophet that's locked up in his house as a prisoner. And the Bible says in Ezekiel 33 that they come to him because they want to be entertained. They want to see the show. They heard about his strange actions and his strange living and, and the signs that he's acting out. And they want to see what is this all about. You know, they want to be entertained by the prophet. So he doesn't have a public ministry, but they go to him. Multitudes go to him, elders go to him, some individuals go to this prophet. And while he is in his house, he acts out his prophecies. So number one, he is bound in his house for seven years. He goes in by himself, he does it on his own. And then the Bible says, number two, he says, God speaks to him and says, behold, they shall put bands upon thee. I don't know who they are. I have no clue as to who they are. But God says, Ezekiel, when you go into that house, there's going to be somebody that's going to come and put ropes on your hands. They're going to bind you in your own house. Amen. They shall bind thee with them and thou shalt not go out among them. So he is a prisoner. He is bound by ropes and he can't leave his house. He does not have a public ministry at all. Again, because they don't want to hear. So God says, all right, I'm taking him away from you. Number three, God says, and I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover. Amen. So the third thing, not only is he going to his house and become a prisoner himself and be bound by other people, but now God causes the mouth of the preacher not to be able to speak. What a strange preacher, a preacher that can't talk. Most preachers I know will talk your ear off. Amen. Now, I'm not really one of those. I don't like to talk people's ears off. Hallelujah, praise God, and there's a reason for that. But I know some preachers, man, you can't get a word in edgewise because they want to talk, 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 hallelujah, to the land, praise the Lord. Uh, brother uh, brother uh, Dice used to say this, they had the gift of gab. You know, the gifts of the Spirit, there's some, some people, people have the gift of gab. But not Ezekiel. 
God, the Bible says, tied his tongue to the top, to the roof of his mouth, so that he could not preach his message. So for six and a half years, he's bound in his house, tied up with ropes, and as a preacher, he can't even open his mouth and speak for seven years. I wonder how he did that. Could you sit in your house for six and a half years to seven years and be bound and not be able to talk? How did he do that? He couldn't tell his wife. He couldn't say anything to his wife. He couldn't say, hey, wife, would you get me something to eat today? Uh, I like pork chops. He couldn't say that. He couldn't say, make me chicken soup. He couldn't say anything to his wife for six and a half years. The point is, normal communication was taken away from this man of God. He wasn't going to be able to just speak about mundane things and everyday living things. You know how it is. We talk small talk all the time. We want to talk about this and talk about that. And there's really no weight in it, right? But this man could not speak those things for six and a half, seven years. He's acting out as a sign of the prophecies to the people of God. You don't want to hear, so God says, I'm going to shut his mouth and he's not going to speak. But that doesn't mean the message is not going to go forth. He's going to act out his message before you for six and a half to seven years with very strange movements among you. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Amen. But not only is it because they do not want to hear his message. The message that he swallowed was so horrific and so terrorizing that it caused him to be dumb in his speech. He could not, if you'll receive it, could not believe what he was seeing or hearing. I will tell you today, brothers and sisters, that there is a time Jesus said this coming upon this world is so horrible and so terrorizing and so horrific. And the signs of those times have already begun now in this hour those signs are happening now praise the Lord church the Bible says a time like the world has never seen if you're not ready today to go to meet the Lord you better get ready I'm telling you you're living in those times right now that the Bible talked about now the Bible says John in the book of Revelation was also told to eat a scroll he's the same kind of prophet hallelujah say praise the Lord church so this man, he's acting out his prophecies for six and a half to seven years. I want you to think about that. How unusual that is. But God's trying to get their attention by making Ezekiel himself a sign. God goes on and says in that same chapter, he said, you will no longer be a reprover to them. You will not be a mediator to them. Don't pray for them. Don't intercede for them. Why is that? Because about six and a half to seven years from today, Ezekiel, God said, I'm putting it on the calendar. I'm putting it on the calendar. The judgment's coming. And it is so irrevocable. They have sinned away the day of grace as a nation. And it is so irrevocable. The judgments are coming. So put it on the calendar, Ezekiel. Do not intercede for them. No longer reprove them. No longer correct them. Just leave them the way they are. But let them let there be known today that there will be a prophet among them. And they will know that a prophet is among them even though he can't speak to them. Ezekiel, don't pray for him anymore. Don't be a mediator anymore. And don't be a reprover anymore because they're not going to listen anyway. Judgment's coming. Brothers and sisters, God help us. If we stop listening to God Almighty, we need the voice of God. Say praise the Lord. But I don't want to just hear the voice of God. I want to obey the voice of God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. And so eating a scroll was a sign to them. His binding imprisonment and also his muteness for six and a half years, only intermittently allowed to speak until finally a man at the time of the judgment when God judges Jerusalem and it falls and it's burned with fire in 586 BC, a man comes and announces the end. He escapes the judgment and he comes running all the way to Babylon and he says, Ezekiel, the judgments of God that you acted 
doubt and could not declare because they were so horrific. They have come upon the land, Ezekiel. And at that moment, as soon as the Bible says, the man who escaped that judgment told him that God loosed his tongue and he was able to speak from that time forward. Give the Lord praise in the house. So act out your prophecy, Ezekiel. So in connection with this, God does something very unusual. He tells Ezekiel, he said, Ezekiel, your wife is going to die tonight. She's going to die. The desire of your heart is going to die. So that Ezekiel, your life experience is a prophecy to the people. What does it mean? What does it mean when his wife dies? And the Bible says, God tells Ezekiel, as I've already read it to you. God says, when she dies, you cannot cry. So now we have another unusual sign in the life of the prophet. A preacher that can't speak. A man that doesn't have a public ministry bound in his house. For six and a half years this goes on. Now we have another situation where we have a sign in his life of the death of his wife. And God says to Ezekiel, do not cry for her. What would normally soothe your pain, the tears that will flow down your face normally, that would bring a little bit of comfort to your sorrow. God says, Ezekiel, you can't shed one tear. You can't get the comfort of the tears flowing down your face, Ezekiel. He said, don't do it. Don't mourn for her. Do not be an expression of weeping over your wife. Amen. Now the Bible says, Ezekiel, as we look at it, verse 15, the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, behold, I've taken away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Notice what he tells him here. I'm taking your wife today. He goes on and explains who the desire is. That's his wife. I'm taking her today with a stroke. She's going to be here today and gone tomorrow, Ezekiel. And when I take her, now listen to me, brothers and sisters. God says that the woman is his desire. So he had a good marriage. He had a happy marriage. Now, sad to say, if God came to some people and said, uh, this one's going to die, your spouse going to die tonight, some of y'all would probably get excited about it. You'd probably be pretty happy about it. They'll say, thank you, Jesus. I've been praying about this for years, God. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm getting tired of putting up with him. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving me relief. Hallelujah. But that's not Ezekiel. Ezekiel loves his wife. He's got a happy marriage. And the Bible says that he, she is the desire of his heart. Can you imagine? He's preaching to a rebellious people. People that are not going to listen to him. He's not going to be successful in ministry. God has already told him. He's a prisoner in his own house. He's bound and he can't speak. And now he loses the only one that brings comfort to him and a little bit of understanding. He is a sign to the nation. Verse 17. Verse 16, neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Amen. In the sad, forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. How unusual that a man would lose his wife and he doesn't mourn. Amen. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee and put on thy shoes upon thy feet and cover not thy lips and eat not the bread of men. He said, don't do this. Don't go. Don't do that. Don't cry. Don't show a sign that you are in mourning, Ezekiel. What a strange request. But more awesome is the prophet's obedience. You understand what I said? We learn by this prophet the importance of hearing the voice of God, obeying the voice of God when it comes to you. Amen. It is the first law that God gives us in his word is the importance of obeying the word of the Lord. 
It is the first law and it is the most important law that we have in the Bible. We need to learn how to obey God. And so before a rebellious house that doesn't want to hear the word of God, that refuses to obey the word of God, Ezekiel will act out perfect obedience. God says don't cry. He doesn't cry. God says don't cover your lip. He doesn't cover his lip. He acts like nothing's happened. He's got to hold inside of him the pain and the mourning and the sorrow. He's got to hold it all in and he can't weep. Are y'all with me today? I think some of you have been in those situations where you're dying on the inside. But God said, when you go into that church house, you don't let anybody know you're dying on the inside. Something has happened in your life and it is extremely painful. And you're crying on the inside. But God says when you go in that house, you don't let anybody know about it. But God, somehow, I've got to release my pain. I need to cry, Lord Jesus, because the tears are giving me some comfort over what I'm going through. But God says no. When you go in that, in that pulpit or you go in that church service, you don't let anybody see what you're going through because you are representing me, hallelujah, to the Lamb. You don't hang your head in sorrow and depression. Yes, 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 yes. We know it's bad at times, but you have to understand that God will come to you and say, when you're going through something, you can't have a public expression of it. Because God is looking for somebody that is living by his word, not by his emotions. I've been through some situations, and Sister Christine and I have been through some situations, and when we walked in the church house, when we walked in the pulpit, we could not express that that we were going through. We just had to stand up and be faithful to God, almighty, praise the Lord. And at times, the same thing with you. You're going through things, but God says, lift up your head. Get that scowl off of your face. Get that unbelief out of your mind. Come before me with a spirit of obedience. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're suffering, no matter what's happening in your life, get it together, Ezekiel. And be as one before them as an obedient servant of God. Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if it seems to be too extreme. God says do it anyway. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It takes a lot of God, brothers and sisters. If your spouse died today and God says, when you go to church, you don't show any expression of grief. You don't mourn. You don't cry. You don't tell anybody. Are you with me right now? You understand what I'm saying? Because God is looking for somebody that will obey him at all costs. We're living in an hour right now where the church needs an example and I'm reading to you that example. I'm not that example, but this prophet of God is a sign to this generation. That no matter what you're going through, you must put on the face of praise. And the hands must go up and you must overcome what you've lost in your life. Why? Because God is on the throne. You have to get to a place in your life, no matter what you're going through, that you refuse to get rebellious like the rest of them. God, I'm not going to let that spirit of rebellion get a hold of me. I'm going to obey you, Lord, perfectly because you need an example of perfect obedience. Even though judgment has come upon his house and his wife has died, he still remains loyal and faithful uh, unto God Almighty. What an awesome example of a man of God. That's what we should be like now. Now, if God releases you to mourn, mourn. But there are times when it's not appropriate. There's times when you need to stand up and everybody needs to see, even when you're going through things, I'm trusting in my God. I'm going to obey God even though it's not going my way right now. 
hallelujah to the Lamb because that's the first law that God has given you and given me is the law of obedience to the Word of God. And it doesn't matter how you feel about it. doesn't matter what you think about it. doesn't matter what you're going through, even how crazy it might sound. God said it. That settles it. I'm going to obey God Almighty at all times. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. This kind of expression puzzled the people. They didn't understand why Ezekiel was not crying over the death of his wife. Why was he so strong in the midst of calamity? Hallelujah. Why? Because he knew God. He had a walk with God. He knew the word of God. He was a sign to that generation. Say praise the Lord. We need somebody in the church today that will go against the normal responses. We need somebody who will stand up and say, Lord God, no matter what I go through, no matter how hurtful, no matter how much sorrow, you are still God and your word is true. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And so in the midst of sorrow and pain, he remained perfectly obedient. That tells me that this prophet, that uh, what God was showing him meant something to him. See, we prove our love for God by our obedience. God had spoken to this prophet. He said, this is going to happen to your wife. I'm taking your desire today. I'm taking your wife today. But if you love me, Ezekiel, you will obey me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you love God today, you will obey him. Obedience is a manifestation of your love. How much do you love God tonight? God. 